Hello everyone, this is Minoxen coming to you with a Battleforge uh, commentary brought to you here in uh, high definition. This is a replay from uh, Sparrow doing Crusade, which is a two-player map on expert difficulty. He is going to be using no Mark of the Keeper, no Parasite Swarm, no Enlightenment, Wheel of Gifts, Ami Monument, Ami Monument or uh, any exploits in this as well. So I'm going to go ahead and speed it up here to two times speed and do my best to keep up with all of the action here. Uh, he's going to go ahead and start off here by uh, summoning in a, some were beasts. These guys are fully upgraded, so that'll help him out a little bit. I believe, uh, I'm not sure if they gain uh, HP along with the region that they get there or not, but uh, going to summon in another group of them right as they're about to die there, run them up, pop them up here, throw in a shaman, and you're going to pull this group of creeps over here, or uh, creatures, I'm not sure what we call them in this game anymore. It has been seven months since my last uh, Battleforge uh, commentary, so forgive me if I am a little rusty. Hopefully this will prove to be a little bit more entertaining than in the past, as I have been commentating uh, Heroes of New Earth now. And he is going to, uh, you know, use these little werebeasts here to kind of tank, and the shaman to keep healing. Going to grab this power well, and he's going to grab that other power well as soon as he can here. He's going to go ahead and continue to pull. He goes and pulls that over. In the meantime, sorry for keeping up on this, uh, he has summoned in two groups of Wind Weavers. He has those fully upgraded. Comes over here and builds this wall up, and uh, he's going to keep just two of these guys here until he can manage to get enough energy to build this orb up here. Uh, he does go ahead and get the power well built, so as soon as he gets that, he sacks these uh, were beasts and allows the um, Master Archer here to go ahead and clean up on that uh, Twilight Paras Parasite Swarm. And uh, now he's just going to sit here and kind of heal all these guys back up. He's going to start his monument building. And in the meantime, he's still defending down here, trying to repair that wall when able. There we go, he's repairing. Uh, goes ahead and cycles these guys around to keep the higher HP group up towards the top. And uh, since there's no uh, friendly building here, they're not going to regenerate just yet. But he finished his frost orb, so he's going to go ahead and use that to bring in a construction hut here. And he's going to bring one in down here as well. And by having this friendly building near here, he's going to be able to uh, have some regeneration going on for these wind weavers. And that will allow them to uh, defend all the more effectively. And he is going to focus fire. Uh, looks like he's uh, using this top group up here, which is in range, to take down those guys. He's going to take them down. The twilight crawlers are going to be next here uses an, uh, some more energy to go ahead and bring on a second construction hut. Then he's sacked this orb and is bringing in a shadow orb. And now that he's uh, <clears throat> a little power starved, he goes ahead and sacks that shaman in the middle there in between the uh, construction huts. He's done uh, doing all the healing now. And with that, uh, now he's got one nature orb and he has one shadow orb. He brings in a Furnace of Flesh, a fully upgraded Furnace of Flesh. Pretty much all of Sparrow's cards are f fully upgraded because this guy is just crazy at Battleforge. He is uh, definitely one of the, the best players I have ever had the pleasure of watching and commentating for. And this Furnace of Flesh right now is not going to provide too much because he has 60 um, Void Energy there, as you can see, or Void Power. And um, so it's not going to be bringing in too awful much, but hey, you know, that 60 Power, as soon as it gets sucked in there, he's going to be able to pull out some more stuff here. Throws down a couple of breeding grounds in addition to the uh, Furnace of Flesh. And uh, this is going to allow him to start uh, summoning in uh, Stone of Torments. And, uh, well, the breeding ground isn't. The breeding ground is for the Shadow Phoenixes, which we're going to see just in a little bit here. And uh, play careful attention here to the um, pattern that he is using on these Stones of Torment. Because this is just absolutely a brilliant pattern. Uh, the way he throws these out here, not only they're all in range of the construction huts... But he is also able to, um, they will kite uh, the creatures that come down here. So he's not even going to need to build the wall at all up there. And uh, meanwhile, down bottom, we've still got uh, these Wind Weavers doing a little bit of defending here. He's going to go ahead and pull those guys off to draw in this, I uh, can't get a click, Twilight Creep. As I'm not sure, I couldn't remember what it was called. And he also brought in a, an Embalmer Shrine. And that's not going to come into play necessarily real quickly here. But uh, he wanted to go ahead and get that built so the co initial cooldown... Uh, will be worn off on it. And uh, now we're going to start to see these waves come in here, and we're going to see the uh, the brilliance in this um, pattern that he's got laid out here, and he's going to go ahead and throw down an additional um, <clears throat> tower here, a time vortex, and that is going to help with uh, taking down a lot of these guys, as, you know, since he's got his void power at such a low amount that uh, time vortex is just going to be doing immense amounts of damage. Takes the two shadow phoenixes, which he summoned in here, so I didn't get to see that, uh, but he used his Embalmer Shrine at the same time, and he's going to be able to go ahead and use those Shadow Phoenixes to take down that Fire Dancer, or whatever she's called, for the Twilight. Going to take her down, and these guys will both 
uh, come back to life as they are Shadow Phoenix. And he's going to continue to summon in Shadow Phoenix up here around this breeding grounds while uh, pretty much all he has to do to maintain the defensive up here is just keep repair on these buildings. So you got to do a little bit of micromanagement back and forth here, paying a little bit of attention, watching for those really long creeps to come down here from this camp on the uh, western side. And uh, he's going to go ahead and keep that defense up and keep things going here. And that Furnace of Flesh doing wonders. His Void Power, as you can see, is sitting right at zero. So don't have to worry about that. And the Shadow Phoenix uh, group up here, we've got up to five now so far. I can't remember how many it is that he has whenever he moves out, but uh, he has a pretty substantial number whenever he goes ahead and decides to come down here and clear this out. I'll try and keep an eye on the minimap for that. And there we have one of the Shadow Phoenixes, and he did use the um, Embalmer Shrine uh, to go ahead and use the Pick Over Bones uh, ability, which allows for corpses to be gathered at a much higher rate. Uh, let me see if I can go ahead and tell you all what it does. 220% more life points uh, that are being gathered. So when these Shadow Phoenixes run up here and they die, they're going to be gathering 220% more life force than what they normally would, which means they're going to be able to uh, resurrect off of lesser hit points. And there we go. Let's see, go ahead and see one being used there. He's going to resurrect, and then the other one's going to come back. And what is her? Twilight Dancer. She's not a Fire Dancer. As, as her, It's the same model, just different. And, whoa, we're up to seven uh, Shadow Phoenix up here now. And the defense is still holding very strong here. And he did go ahead and toss in a Furnace of Flesh. So that Furnace of Flesh is going to be able to aid in his um, continued absorption of Void Power. Uh, so any Void that he happens to throw out here that gets, uh, or any power he happens to toss out that gets turned into Void, will very quickly be um, cycled back into his Power Pool. And uh, we're pretty much at that waiting point as he's just trying to build up enough power, build up enough army here in the Shadow Phoenix. Uh, careful to summon all of them within range of this breeding grounds. Again, you know, every bit helps here as, uh, you know, it, he's just holding out and waiting for uh, his Embalmer Shrines back up, it looks like. And he has moved, uh, how many Phoenix does he have here? He has 10. So you're going to want 10 Shadow Phoenixes. They're fully upgraded. I'm not sure how much of a difference that's going to make. He's going to throw down the... Uh, entangling roots or vines I can't recall I apologize it has been literally six or more months since I have played Battle Forge uh, in any real sense and he's just gonna go ahead and sack all these Shadow Phoenix down here and take out this tower there we go and he's going to be building up a, a frost orb and throwing down another breeding grounds after building up that power well and he's got a little bit of an issue here with these guys so I can't remember how he gets rid of these. I've only watched this replay once so bear with me here as it's kind of still fresh to me but I, I did go ahead and review it. Oh the Ash Bones. This is where he summons forth the Ash Bone Legion. He's gonna summon forth 12 of these guys I believe total and uh, right now he can't continue but also keeping up on this uh, defense up here keeping all these things repaired and his void's still down at one, so he's doing great. And he's also got to keep things uh, repaired on this wall here. And also micro uh, the Shadow Phoenix down here to continue the uh, defense. So excellent use of Shadow Phoenix. I mean, this might as well be called the uh, the Crusade of the Shadow Phoenixes because he's just uh, doing a crazy job here keeping track of all this. And the 12 Ashbones are now going to go ahead and move into the next camp here. Nice con crowd control being used. It uh, looks like, uh, I don't know if he used any additional spells there. I, I don't have a uh, card list from Sparrow yet. I will have that, uh, so you'll probably be able to check that out in the um, additional information below the video, uh, in the underbar, I guess it is. So uh, he's marched right in here with these 12 guys, using some crowd control. Uh, a little bit of a heal on him too there, I believe, to help out. Popping his um, Embalmer Shrine yet again to go ahead and take out that Twilight Dancer. All the while, uh, managed to very nice micromanagement. Oh, and he has a thorns going down as well to uh, provide a little bit of a reflection. Mirror pain, um, I believe it's called thorns, but yeah, he's using mirror pain there to help reflect damage back onto those enemies surrounding him as they do damage. I uh, didn't quite get to see how much it does, but uh, it's a substantial amount. And I think out of all this, he's, yeah, he's only lost one pyromancer or ash pyromancer, ashbone pyro. I'm sorry. Uh, so he's doing a phenomenal job so far. And he's bringing back in the breeding grounds. Uh, well, he, actually, he didn't get rid of that one over there. He's just bringing one in over here now. Uh, and he's going to see about uh, cycling out this defense uh, up here now. He's going to be going over to the Church of Negation uh, once. I'm not sure whether he does that right now or what, but he does. Yeah, also, 
in addition to that, he goes and destroys all these buildings down here, destroys his wall for additional uh, void power, uh, because it does cost power to get that wall built, so uh, he's taken that down, and he's cycled it. You, I mean, you can already see his void power is already back in there. A little bit of crowd control to help with the uh, getting up of these Church of Negations. He has these fully upgraded, so that's probably going to be a pretty important for you to maintain. But he is going to go ahead and throw out some... Uh, Oh, Sky Elf Templars. I was going to say High Templars, but that's not it. Uh, throws that out, destroys the Time Vortex. He's destroyed the majority of his buildings up here. Now he's um, finishing these Church of Negations, summoning a bunch of Kobold Engineers. He's got... how many does he have here? Four. Four so far. And keeping up these Construction Huts. This is saving him a lot of power with these Construction Huts. And uh, he's also being careful to summon next to his Breeding Grounds whenever he does summon something in, so it saves him that little bit of extra power. And he's working on getting his Church of Negations up here. He's going to have six Church of Negations. And he's kind of aiming towards that end game right now. He's uh, building up his defenses here. So whenever this um, next onslaught of creeps, which they, they start to get so much more powerful, these Twilight units, they get to, get to be a lot more powerful uh, whenever you move over and you take out, uh, I believe it's this camp where you engage this camp. I can't remember, but it gets tougher anyways. So he's going to be careful um, to be prepared. And he's going to have plenty of Kobold Engineers here stationed, and you have to keep an eye on these Kobold Engineers, because as I've said in a prior commentary, these little guys will go off and do whatever the heck they want to. So you got to keep an eye on them, and he's not going to box them in, because, you know, that's additional uh, power and additional cards required for that. And he does go ahead and push in here. He did resummon uh, some of his Ashbone Pyros. He did go in, uh, I think he lost one... Where was it that he lost one? I think he lost one there. He was down to 10, I remember, and now he's back up to 12, so he has resummoned them. As you will probably need 12 to go ahead and go in here. He does throw down uh, thorns again. He tosses down the the roots to go ahead and grab hold of all these creeps, using some nice crowd control. Gonna go ahead and go with a cold snap to freeze up this uh, Twilight Hulk. And he is just gonna try and take these guys down as quickly as possible, uh, tossing out another thorns there. And it looks like he only lost two Ashbone Pyros in that entire uh, push there, taking on some really huge units. So uh, nice on uh, Sparrow to be able to do that. He's going to toss down a Breeding Grounds and a Furnace of Flesh, because now he's going to go ahead and sack some of these um, Ashbone Pyros now that he's gotten this orb built up. So he's got four orbs, or four monuments, uh, whatever you want to call them. Um, and he's, you know, going to summon in these giant worms now. And I'm not particularly sure why he goes with giant worms. Uh, they have a lot of HP, their uh, attacks, you know, damage is really nice, and I guess there's quite a few large units here as well, so that might help uh, with their, their attack modifier that they do have. And going to be, again, using the crowd control to uh, keep these guys alive, and you know, he only had, you know, a few Ashbone Pyros going into this last base, but he's going to continue to mop up here, and all the while being keeping, keeping track of these little Kobold Engineers, keeping them busy, and, you know, if there is a bad guy that comes into range, these Kobold Engineers will want to go and attack, so you got to keep, keep them on task. But, um, a very nice show of micro here as, you know, uh, to be honest, I have a hard enough time with this, uh, this map, uh, with a friend. Um, you know, usually one of us is dedicated to defending. I mean, I can do it on expert, but it takes two of us. And so this is just really excellent play here. I'm very impressed from Sparrow. And he's made it to the end of the game here now. We are now seeing uh, all the baddies coming in. Uh, you know, he throws down thorns to go ahead and keep these guys at bay, using the giant worms to uh, help with the defense here a little bit. And Rogan Kale still sitting at full HP. And, uh, you know, some of, these, some of these buildings are jumping pretty far down at times. But he's doing a fantastic job of maintaining the repairs on them, keeping these Cobalt Engineers around. And uh, he's going to finish this map in pretty good time here. As it, I believe it takes just about 28 minutes uh, for him to go ahead and finish this map out. So uh, very good on Sparrow. Thank you so much for providing this replay. It was an, uh, a pleasure to be able to go ahead and do this. And uh, this is the first one I've been able to do quote-unquote live or, you know, as it's happening. So uh, hope you all enjoyed it. Uh, it's good to be back into Battle Forge. Hopefully... Um, uh, with the viewers that I have currently for Heroes of New Earth, we'll get some new people looking in at Battleforge. And uh, it's kind of renewed my interest in it, so uh, I might be seeing you all in-game. But uh, thanks again uh, to... <laughs> sorry, Captain Sparrow, for providing this. Again, this was Crusade on Expert Difficulty, a two-player map, with no Mark of the Keeper, no Parasite Swarm, no Enlightenment, no Wheel of Gifts, Ami Monument, or Exp 
any exploits being used, as uh, apparently there is a wall exploit, I believe. Um, but he didn't even bother to use those, so thank you so much, Sparrow, for this. Uh, appreciate it, and I will catch you all next time.